you doing? I am watching the winch as we haul in a dredge. Uh, so I have to watch the barrel as the wire spools in on it and make sure that it spools safely without anything getting tangled or kinked uh, because while in general it's a pretty boring thing to watch, when it becomes interesting it can be dangerous really quickly and people can get very hurt if something goes wrong with the switch. Right. So it is my job to sit here and stare at it and make sure nothing looks weird and make sure that it's going at the right speeds at any moment. So in fact, in a mere two and a half minutes, I get to slow down the winch from going 50 meters per minute to going 30 meters per minute. It's that's gonna a, be that's pretty exciting. And oh, I yeah. am watching Bridget watch the winch. Mm -hmm. oh. Yeah. It's a two-person job, really. It's very important. I don't know yeah. what I would do if she wasn't here. Well, I don't know what we would do without Emma Actually, in general. <laughs> I would be listening to the Harry Potter audiobook that I have. Which one are you on? I'm on the sixth one. Oh. oh, it's not showing up, but and I can't really show it to you because I'm not allowed to look away from these screens. <laughs> cool, very cool. A critical observational tool for geologists is rock samples. So on our expedition, we're collecting as many rocks as we can to better understand and characterize the 820 Seamount volcanoes. The first way we're collecting rocks is using the Alvin submarine. Alvin allows us to choose exactly what rock we want to collect from the seafloor and to bring that rock back up to the ship where we can characterize it and get it ready for analysis back on land. The other tool we're using to collect rock samples from the 820 Seamount Volcanoes is called a dredge. A dredge is a metal mesh bag that is sent to the seafloor bottom and then dragged along the seafloor collecting rocks inside. It's a little bit less hands-on than Alvin because we can't choose exactly where we get our samples from, but it does give us a way to quickly sample the seafloor. the deck so we're out on the deck and the dredge is coming up and they think there are gonna be ten rocks about that size yeah. hopefully no glass no mud no mud glass. lots of glass yeah manganese no but there's always manganese <laughs> and Ian says there will be so many rocks we won't know what to do with them all yes and that would be an ideal situation as far as I'm concerned oh okay samples when we bring them in either from Alvin or from the dredge is take them into the wet lab where we cut them and process them and begin the process of getting them ready for something we can analyze when we get back to shore. So let's go in and take a look at some of the rock saw action. A machine, Valentino. How's it look, Matt? Yeah, it looks very good. Looks very good, and looks like a couple of different morphologies. Oh, wow. So this one, you can see this nubbin has got clays at least in the glass. Wow. Yeah, that's pretty cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. It does look really good. So you think you got a couple of different faces? Uh, I think there's a couple. I think this stuff is different than this massive stuff right here. It may just be the end. We'll have to take a closer look at it. But this stuff looks a little bit different than this other. Doesn't look like you got too too many though. No, I think we got pretty much right around the ten or whatever that we're looking. <laughs> Sherelle got it right. Let's see. Let's make a count. We got one. So this is the first one, right? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Uh, probably eight with that little guy, and then some miscellaneous scraps in this one. Yeah, it looks like between eight and ten. That's awesome. Definitely more than we can handle. <laughs> <laughs> I think you guys can handle it. You're, oh, yeah. you're team unity after yeah. all, right? It's a part of everybody's PhD experience. That are you getting your PhD, Steve? Forty years later, <laughs> I'm still cutting rocks. <laughs> <laughs> Here's how it's done. 
the saw. So it's a seriously manganese encrusted, fairly altered basalt. It looks like it has plagiophenicris in it. Oh, it does have plagi in it. Yeah. And it might, yeah. It's a lot of plagi, actually. It's an interesting little, little pillow, almost. Like. Yeah. Okay, so after the rocks have been cut down by the rock saw, we bring them up to this science laboratory where we process them further. So I'm gonna go inside and see what everybody's doing. So it's the eight to 12 watches on right now, Team U. So let's check them out. at Matt? Uh, I'm looking at this basalt to try to estimate its crystal content and I'm finding um, little clusters of plagioclase plus olivine and also little clusters of plagioclase plus glass. Now I'm trying to see if there's any pure exceed in here. Ooh. And what do those crystals tell us? Uh, hopefully they'll tell us about the history of how the lava evolved and how it changed its chemistry over time as it cooled and solidified. Cool. And kind of what was going on in the magma chamber before it erupted. Yeah, what's happening in the magma chamber? Hello. What are you doing, Valentina? I'm taking photos of the samples so that we can... Remember uh, what they look like? Exactly. <laughs> yeah, so yeah. these are ones that have already been cut though, right? Yeah. We made a photo for the whole rock before cutting them and later when we cut the rock to see sections and uh, yeah. So you're this the official all... photographer in this yep. crew? Today I'm the official photographer. <laughs> <laughs> so right. Ian, what are you doing? Well, I'm the official glass picker. <laughs> so the reason that we pick glass is that the glass is the chilled margins of this molten material when it hits the sea floor. And so the magma just quenches very quick, quickly and we have this glass that's on the rind or on the outside of the, uh, of the rock. And you can see here, uh, this, is, this is manganese that's deposited after the rock came to the surface, but right along the edge here is this thin sliver of glass. And that's what I'm trying to pick off because the glass gives you a very good information about the um, composition of the rock. Oh. So and it's very, it's the easiest way to analyze the whole, the major element composition of the rock. So that's so what the I'm doing. So the lava, it's like a snapshot of the lava right when it Absolutely. flowed on the seafloor. Absolutely. Ah. So how are you picking that out? I see tweezers, but I heard you hammering too. Yeah, so what I'm trying to do here is take the, um, this, this is it's very crude, but it works is that I, I take the hammer and I knock yeah. the manganese off the surface of the lava and at the same time it knocks the glass off. And then, so I have the glass and the manganese down here and I have my little pickers here. And so I just hunt through here. It's called hunting and pecking. And so I hunt through here until I find something like that, which is a piece of the glass that's inside of the manganese between the rock and the manganese, and so I pick it off, and I put it in my little bag here, and that's what we use to analyze the uh, Awesome. Uh, the rock. Thanks, Ian. Doo -doo -doo. Continuing my tour around the room, and Shrell's over here. So Shrell, what are you hey. working on? So I'm writing down all the information that we got in terms of the length, the width, the height of the rocks, um, as well as um, were they from a dredge or were they from an alvin dive, um, if they have been photographed. So pretty much just a general description. So um, one of the official description person <laughs> in our team. Yeah, so we have a lot of paperwork. We've got notebooks now full of descriptions of yep. hundreds of rocks. Yep. What are we at? Are we over 300 yet? 
Um, close. No, we're close to it. We're Pretty close. close. Yeah, we're over 200 rocks. Lots of rocks. And many, many buckets. Wow. <laughs> so this is what's happening in the lab. <laughs> So that's the glass that they were picking from the big samples. Yeah, and then I break that up because I just need something the size of a grade of sand to mount for the boat mounts. Because we use uh, somewhere between a five and one micron beam to analyze them on the electron microprobe and the laser ablation is only 20, 30 microns in diameter. No. Oh. So. So you can do a couple things with each one of those slivers. Yeah, there's a thousand microns in a millimeter. So we could literally, with one circle, this millimeter in diameter, we could do 10,000 analyses. <laughs> oh, jeez. Okay. We, <laughs> we did 15 alvin dives. 15 alvin dives. And 19 dredges. 19 dredges. So. Oh my god, probably about three or four buckets per thing and 50 pounds per bucket. So, yeah, there's at least a ton of buckets. A ton of buckets. <laughs> and this is what we need. <laughs> a Ziploc bag of pro mounts. So out of, I mean like 300, 400 samples, 300 samples? Something like that. This is what's going to be analyzed back on land. <laughs> but... Hey, Ian. Hello. We were just talking about how we have hundreds of buckets, but this is what we're actually, yeah. we really care about, our little probe mounts. So this is just like a portion that wouldn't fit on the, the deck because there are hundreds of buckets on the deck. And this is like the most important thing. Yeah. But the, the, the thing to keep in mind is that each of these buckets have half a rock, half a sample in them that hasn't been touched. So if someone wants to go back later and reanalyze or look at them in more detail, they're there. So that's good. So, Okay, so that's it. Um, now we take these samples back to the shore and to laboratories and we get to analyze them and see what the lava compositions are and that can tell us about where the magma came from, how it evolved in time, and give us all sorts of information about how these volcanoes formed and what they're made out of. So. Hope you learned a little bit and thanks for watching. Bye. Yeah, this is very plaid fair. Look at all the plaid you clays in there. Oh my god. That's, oh a, gosh, that's, that's a beautiful, serious? that's a beautiful right, little yeah. glass knob there. That whole thing okay, is glass. So with, 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 with just a minimal yeah. uh, magnitude yeah. scope. Yeah. Yeah. That is actually like, you know, far Good less than a millimeter. <laughs>